All right, take your Bibles, turn to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter number three, is where we'll start. Obviously, um, <clears throat> uh, my name is Michael Howard. You know that already, but uh, my wife, Wendy, and my youngest daughter, Kara, uh, we have five children. I have an oldest uh, daughter that is uh, uh, still in our home, but uh, is uh, was not able to get off work to be able to come. But she is uh, uh, looking at, uh, hopefully, uh, this spring, probably getting married, so uh, she'll be out of the nest finally, and so I'm excited about that, and uh, that's, uh, I know she's excited. She's prayed a long time and waited for God to bring the right man into her life, and so she is really excited about what God's been doing the last several months. Uh, then I have a son that is up in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska at Fort Wainwright. He's in the Army, uh, so he has been in, I don't know, about a year or so, uh, something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, a little over a year, and uh, so. And then I have a daughter that is 21 that is uh, at Fairhaven Baptist College, uh, so she is uh, still in our home, but yet at, at the same time she's got two semesters left of, of school and she'll graduate. And then I have a son that is 19, Jonathan. He also ha he has gone three semesters to Fairhaven Baptist, and uh, he has uh, decided that. It's time to start making money instead of spending money. And uh, he come and asked me the other day, he says, there's this young lady that I've noticed. And I said, well, that's great. I said, so now you need a good job and make lots of money. And because without money, there's no honey, right? So, uh, so that's what uh, his desire is. He feels called to preach. So he is looking forward to just training uh, just in a local church setting. And then, of course, our daughter, Kara, which is 16 and uh, a sophomore in high school. And uh, uh, so my wife's done a fantastic job. She's homeschooled uh, almost the entire time of all of our children's lives. Uh, there was just short windows a couple different times to where they went, was able to go to a school. But other than that, uh, homeschooled. I was saved at an early age and called to preach at 17. My wife and I got married at the ripe old age of 18 and I've uh, been married 26 years, so if you can, uh, you're good at math, you've just figured out how old I am, and uh, so God's blessed us, and I thank, thank the Lord for that. The pastor where I was called to preach at, I consider him my spiritual daddy, my daddy in the Lord, I guess you'd put it, and I've uh, loved him very much, but uh, we, he sent us off to Sauk Village Baptist Church to uh, train, and so we spent about 10 years there. I was a youth pastor for about five years at that church. And then uh, have started a couple churches, but pastored uh, another one. And so um, just seeking the Lord's will as you are. So we'll just see what God does, and uh, we'll go from there. That's all we can do, right? Amen. Well, I know you're recording this and you're everything, but I have a hard time. I don't suppose you have any cordless mics or anything, because I will not be able to stand right behind this pulpit. Uh, that's not my style. So Proverbs chapter number 3 is where we'll begin. The book of Proverbs, chapter number 3, and uh, we'll start here in verse number 13. This one's probably easier for now, but maybe that one during the morning service. All right, praise the Lord. Proverbs, chapter number 3, and verse number 13 is where we're going to begin. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you so much for your goodness. I ask that you just bless during this time of Sunday school. Speak to our hearts as only you can. Father, lead us and guide us. We ask you for wisdom. We ask you to uh, show us what your will is for our lives, for the life of this church. And, Father, we thank you for uh, using us. We do not deserve it, uh, but we thank you for salvation. We thank you for using us. We thank you for taking care of us. You are good uh, all the time, and we appreciate uh, all your grace, your mercy, uh, your long-suffering, your kindness, all the things that you bestow upon us. Uh, again, all we can do is say thank you and try to serve you the best of our ability. Uh, but, Father, thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. In Proverbs chapter number 3, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the topic of wisdom. Now, wisdom is, um, it is important. Uh, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. I mean, there's a bunch of things that we can say, say about wisdom. But the fact is, when we look at wisdom in the Bible, it is a life or death decision whether you get wisdom or not. And I, it's one of my favorite subjects. I love the book of Proverbs. I don't know how you've been taught as far as how you get to, uh, how you study the Word of God, how you study the Bible. 
But I will say that uh, one of the things that I years and years ago, and I'm thankful for, is to read the book of Proverbs every month. And it just almost correlates every month with the date. And so you just read a chapter out of the book of Proverbs. And I'm going to tell you, it is chock full of good things. You can learn about marriage. You can learn about uh, finances. You can learn about uh, how you have relationships in life. You can learn about how to be a good businessman. I mean, all these things and many, many other things are found in the book of Proverbs. Well, Proverbs chapter number three, we're going to look at wisdom. And of course, I don't have time this morning to get into every single thing. It's an interesting study. I've, I've preached series of lessons on this before and preached through the book of Proverbs. But in Proverbs chapter number three, let me give you some just the background a little bit about how important wisdom is. In verse number 13, it says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. So in verse number 13, he says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And at the end of verse number 18, he says, happy is the man that retaineth her. Now I'm going to tell you that wisdom is something that you need. It's something I need. God tells us to ask him for it. We'll look at that in just a little bit. But the fact is that be a happy person if you gain wisdom and the fact is this that you can lose wisdom you say well you know what I I'm this age and I've I've studied the Bible this amount of years and I've looked at things in my life and I've seen some things but just because uh, you're an older person or just because you know I can look and say well man I've read the Bible through this many times in all the years I've been in the ministry all the years I've been a Christian but that doesn't mean that I can't lose that wisdom look how uh, why Solomon was, and look at all the stupid things he did at the end of his life. I mean, he did some crazy things. So you need to retain wisdom. And I know the book of Proverbs is written to the young man, but I'm going to tell you, the principles are there for a young man, a young lady, an older man, an older lady. It's there for all of us, okay? So happy is the man that findeth wisdom. I'm going to tell you, it's better than silver. It's better than gold. Uh, you know, precious rubies can't be compared to it. All the things thou canst desire. Now, I don't know about you. I can desire quite a few things. But all the things I can desire, wisdom is better than that. All right? Look over in chapter number 8 and verse number 11. The Bible says in chapter number 8 and verse number 11, it says, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Listen, the things that you can even desire can't even compare to wisdom. I'm going to tell you, it would be nice to have a million dollars. It'd be nice to be able to have, uh, it'd be able to have all the money that you could ever spend in a lifetime. It would be nice to be able to have all the possessions that you would ever need. And you sit there and you think, man, that would be great if all the bills were paid. I had a place to live. I had the vehicles. I was debt free. Everything was where it should be. That would be the best thing that could happen to me. And I'm going to tell you, wisdom is better than even that. All right, it's better than all those things. In fact, if you look down in verse number 35 of chapter 8, where we are, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 35, it says, For whoso findeth me, and of course the whole chapter is about wisdom, for whoso findeth me wisdom findeth life, all right, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Now, I don't have time to get into where the Bible teaches in Proverbs chapter number 1 that we can reject wisdom. But when a person rejects wisdom, the Bible teaches throughout that chapter in chapter number 1 that you'll get calamity and you'll get fear and you'll get anguish and you'll get desolation and destruction. I mean, those are characteristics. That I don't know about you. I wouldn't want those things in my life. I wouldn't want those things to have. I don't want fear. I don't want desolation. I don't want destruction. I don't want those things uh, brought upon me. And God says if we reject wisdom, then that is the course that we're headed down is that course of destruction. So God wants us to have wisdom. And so he says if we get wisdom here in Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 35, then we obtain favor of the Lord. But there are those that sin against their own soul. And what they do is they reject wisdom because the Bible says that they hate that. And we're going to see in a little bit the reason that people hate wisdom. You think, why would anybody hate wisdom? Why would anybody hate to get that wisdom in their life? 
And you sit there and think, I want to be wise. I think if we went around the room today, everybody would raise their hand and say, I want wisdom. Man, we need wisdom in our relationship with our spouse. We need wisdom in dealing with our children. We need uh, wisdom dealing with uh, um, in business. We need wisdom dealing with employees, employers, whatever station you are in life. Man, we need wisdom. You know, we need wisdom to, uh, to, to know who to vote for, the presidential elections, the wisdom to know uh, who to vote. And you say, well, some of those decisions, well, yeah, some decisions are easier than others. You know, it's pretty clear cut. But I'm going to tell you, if you're like me, you've had some decisions to make in your life that you sit there and you think, man, it looks like both of those are a good decision. And you want God's will, I'm sure. And so you look at that and what you need is wisdom. God gives that wisdom. And so when you look at that, those that hate wisdom, I'm going to tell you, uh, they love death. Now, it's a life or death situation when you look at wisdom. Now, I'm not going to get into some great, deep, theological uh, meaning of wisdom, but I, I'm the kind of guy, and you might as well just know right up front, I'm the kind of guy that likes the peanut butter on the bottom shelf. You're not going to find that I'm going to sit here and put the peanut butter up here where nobody can get it. I like things easy. I like things understandable. I like things that are simple. Maybe it's just because I'm dumb. I don't know. But that's the way I like it. A very simple definition of wisdom is this. Knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom. Now you say, why do you say knowledge plus understanding? Well, knowledge plus understanding, there's several verses here. Let's just look at them. Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 6. The Bible uh, shows us several times in the book of Proverbs, he always, it seems like, connects the words knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I mean, there's many times that we could read tons of verses. We're not going to read them all, but you can do a study for yourself. If you have a, some kind of a Bible program on your computer, you know, you just punch in knowledge and wisdom or knowledge and why, knowledge, understanding and wisdom, knowledge and understanding, pour all three words together, you're going to see over and over and over and over and over, they're all connected. Now, there's other words that are thrown in also. There's prudence that's thrown in there. There's other good uh, words also. But knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom. Now, in Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 6, it says, the Lord giveth wisdom. All right, understand that. God is the one that gives wisdom. He's the one that gives it. Now, we're going to show you in a little bit five places of wisdom, places that are in the word of God. But understand ultimately that God is the one that gives wisdom. Now, I know there's some that say, well, you know what? I have the wisdom of experience of life. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, it's just like the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Understand this. True knowledge and true wisdom all begins with God. Now, there's some smart people out in the world that are lost. I'm not going to sit there and deny that. But if you want to look at true wisdom, you know, and I've seen a lot of smart people do a lot of dumb things. A lot of good, successful businessmen that sit there and make a lot of bad decisions. You know why that is? Because they don't have the wisdom. They don't have that from God. Uh, so wisdom comes from God. But he goes on in that verse 6 and he says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh what? Knowledge and understanding. So God's the one that gives wisdom. So what comes out of his mouth? Knowledge and understanding. So there you go. Knowledge plus understanding equals wisdom. God's the one that out of his mouth comes knowledge. Out of his mouth comes understanding. And as the result of that, God is giving wisdom. All right? So if you look in chapter 3, verse number 19, chapter 3, verse number 19, it says, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down their dew. So again, he connects these three words, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in the creation of this world. In Proverbs chapter number 5, in verse number 1, he says, My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Again, Discretion is thrown in there, but knowledge, understanding, and wisdom are connected. If you went to chapter 9 and verse number 10, the Bible tells us in chapter 9, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now, we could dive into each one of these verses, but what I'm trying to show you right now is how God connects knowledge and understanding and wisdom in this book. 
in chapter 14, verse number 6, the Bible says, A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. I'm going to tell you, when you begin to understand things, knowledge is easy. Any parent in here that's ever had to try to teach their child something, you, under, you know what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying. That There just comes a point in their life where all of a sudden a bell, a light turns on in their head, and they're like, oh, oh, that's what that is. You know, you sit there and you're trying to teach the youngster, you know, one plus one equals two. What is the youngster going to say? Why? Why is that? Well, you know, I don't know why. Because somebody figured out a one and somebody figured out another one and it makes two. But you sit there and, you, you know, and all of a sudden one day like, oh, so if I have one thing and one thing, if you add those, I have two things. Now to us, that's elementary. But to a child that's just beginning to learn, it's like algebra. When you sit there and you think X plus three equals ten. And, you, and, it's, and it's so difficult sometimes. You get some, uh, some uh, student, and they're sitting there thinking, this doesn't make any sense. Why does it have to be an X? Why do we have to do this stuff? It doesn't make, and all of a sudden, a light bulb turns on one day, and they're like, oh, 7 plus 3 equals 10. So X is 7. You know, it just, they figure it out. Well, I'm going to tell you, once you understand how something works, the knowledge part's easy. But what we need to understand is God wants us to have the knowledge, get the knowledge, get the knowledge. So you're sitting there teaching. Let's just use children as an example. You're teaching, 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 teaching. And all of a sudden, one day, they, they, your, your desire is that they understand what you've taught them. And they get to that point to where, guess what? There's wisdom. All right? So knowledge is easy. But again, in that verse, he connects knowledge understanding and wisdom. Proverbs chapter number 24, verse number 3, the Bible tells us, Proverbs 24 and verse number 3, he says, through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So here is a household, and knowledge is what's going to fill the chambers, understanding is what's going to establish the home, and wisdom is what's building it. So again, what does he do? He connects those three words. Now you sit there and you say, what's the big deal about knowing that knowledge plus understanding is wisdom? Well, we could sit here and we could just teach and teach and teach on a subject of wisdom. And, and if I had more time, we would take this and often little smaller bites and we would go through this thing and it would be easier to understand. But the fact is, without wisdom, how many decisions are made that are wrong? Without wisdom, how many things do we do in life and we sit back and think, man, I wish I would have done this different? It's not that you have all the smarts in your head because wisdom is from God. And when you're doing it God's way, God blesses that. Now, it sometimes doesn't make any sense, but the fact is God has a purpose and a plan for things. Now, <clears throat> let's take a, a, just a few minutes here. Trying to see what direction I want to go for time's sake. Look over in James chapter number 1. James chapter number 1. In James chapter number 1, this is probably the most famous verse about getting wisdom. In James chapter number 1, verse number 5, the Bible says this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You know what? If you lack wisdom, you know what you do? You ask God. You ask God. Now, there are some live their life to what they'll do is they'll go through this life thinking they have wisdom already. But I'm going to tell you that God, for the most part, what we have to do is we have to humble ourselves before a mighty God. And I don't know about you, but it's just like uh, if anybody in here has had to in their lifetime go up to mom or dad, you're out of the home, you're going to do it all, on your, all yourself, and all of a sudden you're a little bit short of money, and you have to go back to dad and say, dad, I... I can I borrow 20 bucks for some gas until payday? That's very humbling. It, you know, it's very embarrassing, especially when I'm going to do it myself, I'm going to be my own man, I'm going to go strike out on my own and do all this, and then you got to go back and say, I need some help. You know, it's very humbling to do that, and we are proud creatures, and we don't like to ask for help. That's what we are. We're proud. That's what mankind, we're a bunch of, we're a bunch of proud critters. 
God expects us to humble ourselves and go to him. So here you are faced with some decision in your life, and you sit there and you think, should I do this or should I do that? And so instead of taking time to ask God and say, God, I need wisdom, listen, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God's the one that's going to tell you which path to take. Because the devil's probably not going to get you if, if path A is uh, sobriety and path B is drunkenness. Well, I think probably in this room you're going to say, I want path A. Now, I, I don't want to be a drunk. I want, to, I want to live this way. But that's not usually how the devil works. What the devil does is he says path A is here, path B is here. Now, path B, there might not be any sin on that path. But it's in God's will. Now, it's hard to choose between two good things. And if the devil can get you sidetracked with something good, well, didn't he just accomplish almost as much than, to, than if you would have sinned? Now, think about that for a minute. You know, I, I need wisdom to make sure I make the right decisions. I need wisdom to make sure that I, that I write, because you're a judge, are you not? You say, well, we don't judge anybody. Sure you do. You got judged between your children and you over fighting. Now you got to pick which one's right and which one's wrong. What happened? What happened? Well, you know what? Both of them are innocent. <laughs> you know how that is with kids, right? She hit me. Why'd she hit you? Well, he smacked me in the head. Well, why'd you smack him in the head? Well, he pinched me. I, you know the story. You know the drill. That's what happens with kids. So as a parent, you become a judge, and now you have to discern who's right and who's wrong. And you say, well, just give them a both spanking. Well, that sounds good, except for the fact is God teaches the book of Proverbs that it's wrong to punish the just with the unjust. You know, I was brought up that if, if it, well, nobody knows, line them all up, spank them all. That's unbibl unbiblical. You know, so you look at that, now you need to judge. And there needs to be this, God, please give me wisdom so I don't make a mistake. I've had to go to my children and say, you know what, I punished you, I was wrong, I shouldn't have done that because I found out later that they were innocent. You know what di I did? I made a wrong decision. I've got to go to God and ask for forgiveness. Got to go to my son or daughter and ask for forgiveness. You know, I've sat down with the whole family before and said, listen, messed up. Sorry. Shouldn't have done that. Made a wrong decision. You know why? Because at that moment, I didn't have the wisdom God needed me to have. Now, we need to get wisdom. And Proverbs, or excuse me, James 1, 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Just ask God. You know, one, one person does this, another person does that, and we feel like we got to make a decision right now. I don't know how you are. I don't make any decisions on the fly. You know, you go, to, go down to buy a new car, and you sit there, and they're like, they try, to, they try to give you that little sweet talk that they do, and I'll say, you know what i got to do? i got to go home and sleep on it. And they look at you like, no, 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 no. If you don't get it now, you're not going to have these good deals. Then I guess I don't get the good deals. I don't want the vehicle. Well, then all of a sudden their tune changes, and now it's all of a sudden, you, well, yeah, why don't you just let us know tomorrow? You know, the fact is, you know, don't make those impulse decisions, whether it's with children or whether it's buying. You need wisdom. Get on your face before God and say, God, I need some help with this decision. That's where wisdom comes in. So if you need wisdom, you ask God for wisdom, and the Bible says that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. This is the one time in the Bible that God is a liberal. He will give wisdom liberally. Man, he doesn't just take the salt shaker and go, Ch -ch -ch, that's all you get. Man, he pours it on if you just ask him. And so you ask him for wisdom, he pours, and the Bible says he upbraideth not. You know what? God's not going to correct you. Say, what are you doing asking for wisdom? Don't be bothering me with this kind of stuff. God doesn't do that. He wants us to come to him. So if you need wisdom, ask God. Ask God. Then in Jeremiah chapter number 3, and when we go to Jeremiah chapter number 3, I understand that the pastors that it's talking about in Jeremiah chapter number 3 is not the same as the pastors that is in the New Testament, but the same principle applies because they were shepherds uh, for the flock of Israel, and the pastors in the New Testament are the shepherds of the flock uh, of the church of God. Now, 
you sit there and you look at Jeremiah chapter number 3 and verse number 15, God says, I will give you pastures according to my heart, which shall feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. Now, we already saw several different times that knowledge and understanding uh, is connected with wisdom. So it is very important. And I know right now you're praying about, you know, who to have become your pastor. That is an important decision. That's an important decision. And if there's anything that we all need is wisdom. Because the fact is this. It's not just good that you pick somebody that believes the Bible. Because I think in here, the way I understand you all and talking to some of you and all that, you know, I sit here and look, and I don't think you're sitting there thinking, well, should we pick somebody that believes the Bible or somebody that doesn't believe the Bible? That's not the decision you're making, is it? You've already decided we want somebody that believes the Bible. So now what you have to decide is, which one of these fellas? Now you've got good decision, good decision, good decision. Which one? I'm going to tell you right now, that takes wisdom. That takes wisdom. Because you definitely, listen, you know, you sit there and you look at this. Where can you get wisdom? You ask God. What's another place of wisdom? A God-given pastor. Because if a God-given pastor is doing what he is supposed to do, then he is taking the word of God and he is giving you knowledge and he's helping you understand that knowledge. And if you have knowledge and understand that knowledge, that is what wisdom's all about. So it's important. You're going to pick somebody that's going to be preaching and teaching four times a week to you. So that it's very important. So you look at that God-given pastor. But then in Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse number 20, you say, where can I get wisdom? Well, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 13, 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. He that walketh with wise men shall, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 20 says that if you will get up beside some wise men and start walking with them, you know what God says? You'll be wise. But if you get up to a, a bunch of companions of fools, you know what the Bible says? You get there with companion fools and you get going with them, then you're going to be destroyed. How many times have you heard some preacher say something that be careful the crowd you run around? Walk with wise men, you're going to be wise. That is this, a principle from the word of God. Iron sharpeneth iron. Those that you hang around are those that you're going to be like. If you always want to be uh, uh, looking and, and, and searching for something else and, and always be uh, running around with this certain crowd, then don't be surprised that that is what you become. We need to understand that we need to walk with wise men. All right? So if you want wisdom, you ask God. If you want wisdom, you get a God-given pastor. You want wisdom, walk with wise men. Walk with those wise men. What was Rehoboam? Remember Rehoboam? There was King David. He had a son, Solomon. Solomon had a son, Rehoboam. Solomon dies. Rehoboam becomes king. The old men come to him and say, if you will do this, we'll follow you. What does he do? He goes, or excuse me, the people say, if, if you do this, we'll follow you. He goes to the old men that stood before his father, and they said, listen to the people. You listen to the people. Well, he didn't like that. So you know what he did? He went to his own peers. And when he went to his own peers, they said, you tell them that your pinky is going to be thicker than your daddy's thigh. In other words, you tell them who's going to be the boss. Well, what happened? He lost the kingdom, which God said was going to happen, but it was only because of his own stupidity. And so you look at that, you walk with wise men. It is so important. Then in Psalm 19, Psalm 19 and verse number 7, in Psalm 19, verse number 7, you have not only asked God, not only God given impact, not only wise men, not only uh, uh, those things, but also the word of God. In Psalm 19 and verse number 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You know what the word of God does? The word of God will take a simple person and make them a wise person. Now, don't sit there and think, well, they're simple, that means they're dumb. No, that's not what it means. 
When, when, when somebody is ignorant, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're stupid, okay? It just means they don't know. You know, they don't know. You know, you, you, you take this mama right here and got two little babies in her arms right there. Well, that mama right there is not going to sit there and say, why don't you run across the street, honey? She's not going to say that because she understands. They don't quite understand that there's moving vehicles that can flatten you and kill you. So anytime that there's these little children and they go run into the road, what happens to mama? <laughs> and they go running and grab them, and then their heart's beating 100 miles an hour, and they're holding that little baby tight. Why? Because they understood that that child did not have any clue what that was, uh, what was going to happen to them if they ran out in front of cars. That doesn't mean that the child is stupid. They're simple. They don't understand. They don't have the knowledge. So what you do is you begin as they grow up to teach them. You stop and you look both ways and you make sure. You know, our mailbox is across, our, across the road. Of course, I live on a dirt road out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, but, uh, but the fact is, you know, when our kids, they got the aid, can I get the mail? Can I get the mail? Can I get the mail? Well, what would you do? We would teach them to go out there and stop. Look. Make sure. And when they first were doing it, they had to look back at us to make sure that we said it was okay. And then they would run across the street, get the mail, and they'd run back. And they thought they were big stuff. You remember those days, right? Well, it's because they're simple. What were we trying to do? We were trying to fill them with knowledge and eventually helping them to understand that if they stepped out in front of a moving vehicle, they're going to die. And children this age don't understand that. But as they get older, they begin to, you know what that is? That's gaining wisdom. Now, you and I, we're older. We know better. We're smart. No, God gives us the Bible so that we will continue to get the knowledge, continue to get the understanding, because we need to be made wise. All right, so the Word of God. Now, this one, I want to spend the last few minutes on this one, Proverbs chapter number 15, because, because this specific one is one that we all choke at. Ultimately, understand this. God gives wisdom. All right? I think that, I mean, that's in, an indisputable, indisputable fact. We could argue about the pastor because it doesn't necessarily say wisdom. It says knowledge and understanding, but that's another argument for another day. The fact is we understand there's no argument. The word of God shows us that the simple will be made wise. There's no arguing when it says, whoso walketh with wise men shall be wise. I mean, you can't argue with that. So walking with wise men, going to the word of God, uh, understanding that you can ask God for wisdom, all those are great. But here's the problem with most, most people. They expect God to have this silver platter float down from heaven, and what we need is on it. We just pick and choose what we want. Now, I'll tell you right now, God doesn't always just hand you things that way. Brother Houston can understand this. You go uh, pastoring for so many years and then being in evangelism and things like that, there's times where you sit there and think, Lord, I have no money. Probably all of us could, uh, could understand those spots in our life. And you get on your knees before God and you say, God, I need this much money to pay this bill. And I've had it life I'm sure just like you all have had in your life to where all of a sudden you go out and maybe there's a check in the mailbox or somebody stops by the house or the one day I'm driving home and I go and there's an envelope and it just has a wad of cash in it and I and it's just sitting there in my door have no idea who it's from nobody and I sit there and I think praise God for that God is so good and it's wonderful to have those kind of things happen but I'm going to tell you more times than not I've gone to God and said, God, I need some extra money. And the boss said, would you work a double today? Well, God, I didn't want the money that way. <laughs> I wanted you to give it to me. I don't want to have to work overtime. You know, or you're sitting there and you need extra money and somebody will call me up and say, hey, can you put the roof on my house? Well, I don't want to work three or four days putting a roof on a house by myself. But at the end of that week, I'm thinking, that's a pretty nice chunk of change. Well, what is it that God did? God supplied the money. He just didn't supply how I wanted him to. 
So it's not God that is at fault. It's me. My thinking is wrong. Well, we can go to God and say, God, please give me wisdom. And God says, I will give you wisdom. But here's the question. How is God going to give you wisdom? It's not going to come down on a silver platter. In Proverbs chapter 15, look in verse number 31. Proverbs 15 verse 31 says this. In Proverbs 15 31, he says, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. God will give wisdom, and a place that he gives wisdom is the reproof of life. Now, the word reproof is an interesting word. There's, uh, there's words that, you know, there's reprove, there's rebuke, there's exhort, there's admonish. We don't have time to go into But the word reprove or reproof has this idea, to bring to light. So I'm sitting here, and, uh, and somebody, you know, let's just, let's just use my suit jacket for an example, and, uh, and I have a spot right here. And my wife comes up and says, you know, I noticed you wore your suit today during church, and, you know, it's... And, uh, you know, did, did you know you had a stain right here? Maybe, we'd, maybe you'd want to wear your other suit jacket tonight. You know what she did? She pointed out something to me. That was reproof. Now, what God does is he takes the Bible, he takes the preacher, he takes parents, he takes those in authority, maybe a boss, and they will come to you and they will point out, you know, I'd rather you do it this way instead of this way. Well, the average person, for anybody in here that's working a job, you understand they do this. <sighs> Who does that boss think he is telling me I did something wrong? Anybody go to, the, go to the break room and hear the, you know what the boss did today? Man, he did this and he yelled at me and he told me that I couldn't do this. What they've done is, whether the boss was right or not, who was in authority? That boss was. Who's the one who writes the paycheck? That boss does. Who are you working for? That guy. So guess what? Even if it's dumb to do it his way, shouldn't his way rule? And so you do it the boss's way, and you sit there, and you think this is dumb, but it doesn't matter if, you know, if he wants me to take that offering plate and set it there, and that offering plate and set it there, and you say it's stupid because now the usher's got to walk all the way over and all the way back. But yet, if the, you, know, you see what I'm saying? You sit there, and you look at those kind of things, and, and we, and, and those people, those employees, listen, I've been an employee for all, all my life. You know, I, I've only had um, uh, a, a short time in my life to where I've not worked a secular job. And so you sit there and you look at, at those times in your life. You know, I've had bosses and I've had times to where they come up and say, I don't want you to do it that way. Well, that's reproof. And if I accept that reproof, I'm a better person for it. Because the reproofs of life, that's where we get wisdom from. So when I go to God and I say, God, would you please give me wisdom? What he's going to do is when you're reading the Bible in your own time, doing your devotions, God speaks to your heart and he says, this area needs improvement and this area needs improvement and this area needs improvement. And you can either say, yes, Lord, you're right. I do need to change because my life needs to match up with the word of God. And if my life needs to match up with the word of God and my life is not, then I'm the one that needs to change. But what happens to a lot of folks is uh, they sit there and, and they, so they'll say, well, you know that old King James Bible. And, and so what they do, the world runs out and says, let's invent other versions of the Bible. Instead of it just being, well, you know, that, that, that's just kind of a bloody religion, all that blood stuff about Jesus. I don't like that. And so you go to the, the, the newer uh, Bibles that they have, and they take a lot of those verses about the blood out. Well, what is that? That's, they, they don't want that reproof. They don't want to be told that they're wrong. They don't want those things. The reproofs of life. And I'm going to tell you, the reproofs of life are everywhere. You know, when you were younger, or maybe your children, you say, go clean your room. Now, I know that every guy in here, when you were 15, loved to hear your mom say, pick up your dirty clothes and put them in the hamper. Because I enjoyed that. I didn't ever do it, but I enjoyed it. But, you know, you sit there and you think about when mom says to do that. And you know what it's like being that 15-year-old boy and you're doing this. Anybody remember that or am I the only one? 
You know what I did? I was rejecting reproof. Because mom said to clean it up, and I didn't, and she had to correct me for it, and then I'm grumbling under my breath and everything else. I'm rejecting that reproof. You know what ultimately I did? I basically said this, God, I do not want to be wise. That's really what I was saying. I didn't say that with words because all of us want wisdom. We want to have that wisdom, but we don't like the package it's wrapped up in. Because the package that wisdom is wrapped up in is reproof. God, give me wisdom. It's not going to float down out of a silver platter. It's going to come through the reproofs of life. God's not just going to sit there with a magic wand and go, poof, you're wise. It's going to come through the reproofs of life. So when we get those reproofs of life, understand God is trying to give us wisdom. Now, everybody wants it, but nobody wants the package it comes in. If you go back to Proverbs chapter number 1, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 1 and verse number 20, he says this, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Proverbs 1, 21. She crieth in the cheap place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying. Now, wisdom is, is, wisdom is accessible to everybody. Let me just put it that way. He says it's at the gates, it's in the city, it's in the streets. All those. In other words, what he's saying is it's at places to where everybody is at. So the youngest child in here can get wisdom all the way to the oldest person in here can get wisdom. It's for everybody. Verse 22, how long ye simple, we love simplicity. And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. We don't have time to get into those words. Here's what wisdom says in verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Wisdom is here, ready to reprove us, to correct us, to help us to grow, to change maybe something in our life. He takes that flashlight and shines it on our sin, shines it on what, uh, something that we're doing, and we can either accept that reproof and say, you know what, you are right, that is a change I need to make, and go on living for God and gain wisdom, or we can do what the Bible teaches down through the rest of the chapter, where the person rejects wisdom. Now, you're not going to get wisdom in one minute. It's the reproofs of life. It's over and over and over and over and over and over. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, children with their parents. Listen, it's a hard job being a parent. Because there's times you come home from work, you're dead dog tired. You don't want to deal with the child. You don't want to deal with, you know, it's like, I walk in the house and I got to spank them already. I walk in the house and I got corrected already. I walk, I'm just tired, I want to sit down. You know, that, I know. I've been there. You know, you sit there and you look at that, but yet what is it? We, we see these children and you look at those children in their lives and what are they going to do? Reproof, 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 reproof. Why do we want to do that? Why do we want to correct them? Why do we want them to grow? Why do we want to help them along life? Why do we want to explain this is wrong, this is right? Why do we want to take them and explain to them, don't touch that knife, don't touch that handle, don't put your fingers here, don't stick your little finger right there? Why do we take all that time to do that? Because it's for their good. Because you want them to grow up and be productive adults. You want them to be wise. God's no different with us. We are his children, and it doesn't matter what age you are physically, what age are you spiritually? And you know, it might be that this person has just started their journey with the Lord. And maybe this person has been way down here in their walk with God. I'm going to tell you, God wants us to be wise, and it's the reproofs of life. And last but not least, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5 says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. A wise man will hear. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? When we look at a child and they stick their fingers in the ear and they go, la, 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 because they don't want to hear you. We as adults don't physically do that. But if we're not careful, we'll do that spiritually. God, I know you're speaking to me. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear it. Let's not be that way. Because a wise man will hear. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to teach. I pray that you just help us to grow. 
Father, so many things that, you know, so many times I've looked at this subject and it's always fresh and new to me because I sit there and think, I don't want to lose this thing. I know I've done or had times in my life where I've made bad decisions and it's not your fault, it's my fault because I wasn't listening. So, Father, please give me wisdom. Give us all wisdom in here. Help us to follow you. Lead us, guide us, direct us. Bless the morning service. Thank you for everyone being here for Sunday school. In Jesus' name. Amen.